Hello again, I'm Callum Brown for 74XX. If you've seen my previous repair videos, you'll know that I use a camera pointed at a CRT to show you what I can see on screen while I'm repairing PCBs. The system works okay, but it has some drawbacks. For example, artifacts like a line rolling up the CRT are very common. And since I use inexpensive cameras for my show, I don't have the granularity necessary for the settings, for example, shutter speed, to get rid of these artifacts, especially when I'm changing PCBs all the time during a show. So I thought it was time to come up with a digital capture solution. I specifically wanted to create a budget digital capture solution and one that I could use to drive the original CRT, whether that's the one on my bench or the one in a real arcade machine. So what's wrong with pointing a camera at a CRT? The image often has a rolling line or flashing screen, and because all my cameras are webcams with limited configurability, I can't adjust the shutter speed finely enough to fix it. It's also just generally low quality. The other problem that I have is when I'm streaming I really can't see that CRT because I have a shroud around the monitor to block out glare. In fact I'm usually looking at my broadcast software preview which is very small and somewhat delayed from the original signal. I need to use the CRT as part of my bench equipment because it's analog and will just show the video signals directly even if they're not to spec and that's useful for diagnosis. So I decided it was time to come up with a digital capture solution. There are a few things you have to consider when putting together this sort of system. The first issue is upscaling the original image to something your capture card can handle. The next is converting that upscaled image from analog to digital. And finally, you have to consider how to split the signal between the CRT and the capture card. The easy solution would be to get an advanced digitizing scaler such as the open source scan converter, also called the OSSC, and pair it with an HDMI capture card. But I wanted to see if I could come up with a cheaper solution than using the OSSC, and the recent availability of custom firmware for a certain affordable scaler made me think this could now be possible. A capture card is required in any solution, and I was fortunate enough to find an older Elgato Game Capture HD for about $60 Canadian, which is close to $40. US at the moment. Maybe I got a smoking deal, but I have seen them come up for this price from time to time. The resolution requirement for the Elgato is basically 720p or 1080p. It also supports 720 by 480 which is the resolution DVDs used, but is not what we refer to as 480p in the arcade world, which is 640 by 480 the capture card does have analog inputs and claims to support 240i over composite or S-video, but I didn't want to take that hit on quality. The affordable scaler that I mentioned before is known as the GBS 8200. This is a dirt cheap scaler that most arcade enthusiasts have at least one of around the house. It's an easy way to upscale an arcade signal to higher resolutions intended to help arcade operators install LCDs in machines after the CRT fails. After all, CRTs are not being produced anymore, so this is a common solution, blasphemy as it may be. Luckily, the GBS control project hosted on GitHub has transformed the clunky GBS into an amazing scaler that supports the output resolutions that I need. A separate microcontroller is needed to run this new firmware, which can be any of several boards based on the ESP8266 chip, which has built-in Wi-Fi. I chose a Node MCU board from Amazon, which sells for about $20 Canadian for a set of three. Stay tuned to 74XX in the future for some other arcade-related things to do with these boards. So let's start by getting this firmware running. Step-by-step -step instructions are available from the wiki on the GitHub project, but I'll go through the broad strokes here. I chose to mount the Node MCU to a corner of my GBS using a PCB standoff. The Node MCU board connects to the GBS with only a few pins. I connected SDA and SCL from the GBS to D1 and D2 on the Node MCU. Then you have to add a debug pin from this chip to D6, plus power and ground, and you have to close this jumper. Next, I powered up the GBS board and connected the USB cable from the Node MCU to my computer. I already had the Arduino IDE installed, so I just had to add the ESP8266 board manager URL to preferences, then install the board support from the board manager. You have to install a few libraries, then finally download and open the GBS control sketch itself. 
I selected my specific board, changed a few settings, and uploaded the sketch. GBS Control is now running. This PC doesn't have Wi-Fi, so I grabbed my phone and found the new GBS Control network. I joined this network with the default password, which is QQQQQQQQ, that's eight Qs, and navigated to HTTP colon slash slash GBS Control. This will show the web-based configuration screen. Here you can optionally add your household Wi-Fi information so GBS control is accessible on your network. At first I'll connect my super gun to the GBS using this 8 pin ribbon cable. I actually designed this super gun's video header to match the GBS so it's just a straight through cable. I'll plug in an LCD with VGA support to see if everything is working so far. Okay, great, we are upscaling and I can choose resolutions including 720p and 1080p, which is what my capture card requires. But remember, this is not a digital signal. We are still talking about 720p or 1080p over analog. Next, I'll plug in this VGA to HDMI analog to digital converter, another cheap Amazon purchase that was about $17 Canadian. This cable has a USB plug for power and a 3.5 millimeter jack for injecting analog audio, another bonus. I'll connect this output to the Elgato and fire up the software. Let's test it with a Neo Geo board running Samurai Showdown 2, one of my favorite games. Hallelujah. If all you need to do is upscale your image so that you can use your arcade PCBs on a higher resolution monitor, such as a PC CRT or an LCD panel, you can probably stop after the step with the GBS 8200 upgrade, optionally adding a VGA to HDMI converter if you need it for your specific LCD panel. However, we have one more complication, which is that we want to preserve the original analog signal and send it to the CRT, either in the arcade machine or on the bench, at the same time that we send it off to the signal chain that eventually gets to the capture card. If I simply use a VGA splitter cable, the signals get dull and there's interference on the CRT. Many streamers seem to get around this issue by using professional CRTs like Sony PVMs which have circuitry to buffer the incoming video signal and provide a pass through. See how I can output this image to both of my Ikigami monitors at full brightness. But the little Commodore CRT I use on my bench doesn't have this feature built in. And if you were streaming from an arcade machine you wouldn't have this either. My first thought here was an active VGA splitter. After all, VGA is just analog video at a higher resolution. I figured a cheap but powered splitter would just have analog amplifiers inside. This Ugreen active splitter was $23 Canadian or about $16 US on Amazon. I also bought a variety of VGA terminals, both male and female. Next, I made an adapter that goes between my super gun and the input on the VGA splitter. Then I made another adapter and wired this back to my CRT. Since the GBS features a VGA style input port, I can just use a standard VGA cable to connect the splitter to the upscaler. Let's turn on the board and... There we go. We have a great image showing on both the capture and on the CRT. If we compare the capture to the original CRT, we can see that there is actually a bit of lag. If we go back one step and connect the output from the scaler directly to a VGA monitor, we can see that there is no lag. Or if there is, it's very small. So the lag is definitely the fault of the capture card, and I wonder if a newer or more expensive capture card would have lower lag for streaming. Now let's try on a real arcade machine. As I mentioned in my turbo video, I like to standardize the video connectors in my machines. This means with just two more adapters, I can send the board's video signal to the capture system and send back the buffered video signal to the monitor. Let's power it on, and it's working great. <coughs> and 
And that wraps up our budget game capture solution. I hope you found it useful. Special thanks to the creator of the GBS control project. I'll have the GitHub and other links in the description below. Uh, in the comments, let me know if you've used this uh, GBS 8200 upgrade, if it's been working for you. If you use a similar streaming solution or something else that I'm not aware of, let me know. And in the future, as I mentioned, I'm going to do some more project involving those little uh, Wi-Fi microcontrollers. I have a couple neat ideas um, for some automation uh, with the machines that could be quite fun and quite useful. Until next time.